Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Today is very exciting because this video is part of a Christmas collaboration with seven other YouTube artists. I will leave a link in my video description to the playlist so you can see all the different interpretations of the theme, see what everybody else made. So the guidelines for this collaboration were that it must be a Christmas project, we must use a moulds and shapes mould and we must try four different techniques. I had just the right mould waiting for this job so stay tuned and see what I created. So here's the mould I'll be using, it's from Moulds and Shapes and it's six Druzy Christmas baubles. And although all four of the baubles that I'm making today will be done quite differently, they do all have something in common and that is the fact that I'm going to be applying powder to the mould for, for different effects in each one. But yeah, they all have that in common. So the four designs I decided to use were the four corner ones. I'm not doing the two central ones. And for this first one, I chose some metallic gold pigment that's from Resin Pro. And I'm just brushing it onto the areas that I want it with a big soft brush. I'm not worrying about making a mess on the area where I don't want it because that can be wiped off afterwards. It's much easier to wipe off the excess afterwards than to try and stay off that area, if you get what I mean. You'd be there all day if you were being, you know, super careful and it's easier just to clear off what you don't need. After a while, I realised I really should be masking off the areas that I'm not working on at the moment, just to keep those clean. And yeah, when you get a order from Moulds and Shapes, your moulds come separated by those pieces of cardboard in plastic, and it's so good, it keeps them all nice and flat. The Moulds and Shapes moulds are always so well packaged, and I keep those pieces for storing my moulds with, but they worked really well for masking off the areas <laughs> like I've just done, so yeah, I do like those. So you get the idea of applying the powder. I'm going to zip through the rest. For this one, I used silver, and I just did it on around the edge, and those smooth bands going across and I left the juicy area free. Right, for the star, instead of using pigment powders, I'm using chameleon flakes from Let's Resin and they worked really nicely. Because they're a bit bigger, they did take a bit longer to apply. I had to kind of push them down into all the detail. But yeah, when you see this one at the end, this one turned out super good. It was my favourite, I think. So I'm using two different colours of the chameleon flakes together on the star. I think it was violet and blue that I used. And for the last one, I wanted this one to be totally covered in powder because it's going to get a black epoxy fill in for this one. That was one of the techniques I chose. And so, yeah, I needed to get all of it coloured. And that was a two-step process. First of all, I coloured all the druzy area. I did three different colours on that. And then after I'd done the cleanup, which you'll see in a minute, I applied um, pigment powder to the smooth areas so that, you know, it was much neater that way. And so you'll see that in just a moment. So for cleaning up the area where I didn't want the pigment powder, I just took a baby wipe, wrapped it around my finger and just cleaned it all off and then just kept, kept moving my finger to a clean bit of baby wipe and eventually it all came off. It was a little bit time consuming, especially for this one that you're seeing me do here, but the other ones were a lot quicker and yeah, it's not as difficult as you might think. It comes off nicely with a baby wipe. So back to my bauble and once it was all cleaned up I could use the gold pigment powder to finish it off and I just did that around the edges and on those zigzags. 
Right then, that's all the baubles prepared. Now to work on the four different techniques that I promised I would do. The first one I'm going to be using is adding paper. And I've cut my circle of paper there. So that's going to be one of them. The other one, I've got some chameleon vinyl. And yeah, I suppose this, they're a similar technique, but different things. Do I get away with that? Yeah, I think I do. <laughs> anyway, I didn't want that squared paper on the back. And also, I didn't want to try adding it to the bauble while it was sticky on the back. I thought I might get into a right mess doing that with sticky vinyl. So I just took the back off and stuck it onto some acetate so that it wasn't sticky anymore and it was going to be easier to add it to the epoxy, which you will see in a moment. So once it was on the acetate, I just cut it out and then it was ready to go into the bauble. So for my first two coasters, I just need some clear epoxy resin. I'm using J Diction's resin today for this one. It's the three times um, UV protection, UV um, <laughs> epoxy resin. And you mix it one to one by volume. I think I did about three ounces of each and then mixed it very carefully until it was fully combined. And then I could apply it to the moulds. So these first two baubles are quite simple really. All I did was I half filled each of the bauble moulds and then got rid of the bubbles by poking some of them. The ones that got just into the edges, they're always difficult to get rid of. So I carefully poked them without scratching the powder off the mould. So you do need to be very careful. I'm also using a silicone brush there just to try and get all the resin into the druzy detail without having air bubbles trapped in there so yeah that's all I was doing there and then I took my paper bent it I think they call it the taco style <laughs> I don't know but anyway bent it and very carefully put it in and unfolded the bend does that make sense anyway I just gently applied it so I wasn't getting air pockets trapped underneath and very gradually you will see the resin start to soak into the paper the thing when you're using paper is that it will darken it a little bit. So I chose quite a light coloured design. I didn't go for anything too dark because I knew it would get darkened by the resin. And that's as simple as it is. And I'm doing the same thing with the vinyl, just bending it and then gently unbending it. And so it straightens out. And yeah, I'm sure I was told... It was the taco or taco method. I think I, I think we say taco here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't eat them, so I've never had to say it before. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, <laughs> I'm pressing it around there to try and make sure that there's no, no pockets of air trapped underneath. With that one, I can't see, so I just had to be really thorough to make sure that no air bubbles were coming out, and I, then I knew that there were no pockets there. <sighs> Once that was done, all I needed to do was fill it up with the clear resin, and we could move on to the next ones. Right then, for this one, I'm using more of a resin effect technique. I've mixed up my resin in just the same way as before. I've separated it into two silicon cups. And this one is a transparent violet pigment from Pebeo. I think it's the Vallejo Pebeo pigment. And yeah, I'm just putting that on first. And the other one is Interference Purple from Resin Pro. And I'm just putting that onto the top. And what happens is it's very heavy and it goes through the transparent pigment and causes it to have a really nice effect on the other side, which you will see soon. So you don't need to be careful in the way you apply it. Just pour it on. I've just done it all over the place in squiggles like that and it really doesn't matter as you will see later. As long as it's all covered all over, that's all that matters. And as I mentioned earlier, for this one, I wanted black epoxy in there to make the colours really show up on the other side. And it's black liquid pigment from Resin Pro that I've just added. So this one's probably the easiest of them all because once you've added the pigment, all you've got to do is pour it in and it's done. And then all I had to do was wait until the next day to demould them and I couldn't wait to see how they turned out.
And as if by magic, it's the next day. Let's have a look. We'll start with the paper one. So this one's got a very unique look about it. It's very simple. I think the paper works really well. I love the Druzy effect on there. So yeah, it's very clean looking, that one, I think. It's quite nice. Not my favourite, but I liked it. Let's have a look at the vinyl one. Right then, the vinyl works really well as... Do you see how the light catches it and it changes colour because it was a chameleon vinyl? The only problem is, do you see the silver is very patchy? I'm going to come back to that in a minute and show you how I rectified it. But yeah, I love the way the vinyl has worked behind the druzy. That works so well. Just need to clean up the silver. Let's have a look at this one, which I think was my favourite. It's either this one or the next one is my favourite, but let's have a look. Ta-da! <laughs> I love it. I love that effect. That has worked so beautifully. I really do love that one. Yeah, very, very nice. I love this mould from Moulds and Shapes. It's already done all the hard work for you with that juicy effect on, hasn't it? It's just already beautiful, whatever you do with it. So now let's look at the last one. Come on, show us. <laughs> Here it is. There we go. I really love that one as well. Doesn't that look cool? Really, really good. I think that's going to look really nice on the Christmas tree with the lights shimmering off it. Very, very nice. So, yeah, let me show you how I sorted out the dodgy silver on the vinyl one. <laughs> So what I decided to do was to very carefully apply UV resin all around where the silver was and then kind of paint it into position, you know, fill it all out, spread it all out. It took quite a long time, but mm, I felt that that was going to be the best option. You could use like a silver pen or you could even paint it on with a brush, but then you get pen marks or brush marks and mm, I'm not sure that that would have looked good. So what I thought was to use UV resin, put it under the UV lamp just for about 10 seconds or so. I th actually, no, I think I did 20 seconds. Yeah, <laughs> 20 seconds. And then it's still tacky and you can brush on your silver powder. And that way you get a nice, clean, even finish. And it tidied it up nicely. It made it look completely different, actually. But at least I didn't have the silver patchiness that I had before. And in the end, I was happier with it. So then I was ready for the finishing touch, which was to put an eyelet into all of the holes. And I think that finishes it off really nice. But they were a little bit too small, really, for, the, for those holes. It wasn't a snug fit. So I got my glue gun, put a little bit of hot melt glue into the hole. Then I did the eyelet and then pushed my micro brush through the hole of the eyelet to get rid of any um, hot glue that might have been blocking the hole. And that kept it into position nicely so that's it they're all finished i think i managed to do four different techniques kind of <laughs> i kind of stuck to the criteria and yeah i've got four different baubles and i love them all and yeah all it needs now is a little bit of string so that they can be hung from the tree when the tree goes up it won't be long now if you've enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And don't forget to go and check out everybody else's version of the theme, see what they all managed to do. And I will see you again next week. Thank you for watching and bye for now.